afternoon, everyone. How we doing? <laughs> yeah, another day of madness. The evening of madness, even. Wow. I hope you like my new attire. This is uh, Mrs. Crunch has been shopping, so my wardrobe department's come up cr trumps again, look. <laughs> Mental. Farter Christmas. <laughs> oh, dear. How are we all doing, anyway? The chat's decided to de delete some people already, but they, what can I say? <laughs> I think it was Robin first, but afternoon, Linton. What was Linton saying? It's uh, a bit nippy in the shed, so retire to your armchair. I don't blame you, Linton. I'd be the same. <laughs> Theo. Very good, Theo. Uh, Michael Hyde, I'm Michael. Daniel, got there in plenty of time today, Daniel. Benji, sir. Oi, Benji, as ever. I don't think you've ever, ever missed one, Benji, have you? Maybe one, I'm not sure. Phil, Phil Taylor, how are you doing? Simon's World, hi, Simon. Andrew Pitt, hi, and Andrew from Berlin. Thumbs up for the advent calendars. We've got plenty of them, haven't we? Three this year. I should maybe have saved one back, but you know, you know what it's like. Evening, Nick. Evening, Brett. Video Monkey back in again. <laughs> How you doing, Video Monkey? I think I said hello to you, Michael. Doug's in. Afternoon, Doug. Eight degrees C. It's a bit cooler in here today, actually. And we're saying 21. I don't know. It's always hot in here. Paul. You're in and then back out again. Georgie, how you doing, mate? I think all the bits are in for your um, Sony, so we might be revisiting that one again very soon. Another shocking... T this is actually a shirt this time, look. Collar and all, eh? Real posh. Hi, Andy, how are you? <laughs> oh, dear. So yeah, we're going to have a look at um, we're going to have a look at Roberts today for a change, and uh, I don't think I've I've pulled this one out before. I've done uh, quite a few Roberts over the years, but um, I don't think I've done one of these. It's been sat on my shelf, and um, I was sort of imming and amming what to do today, and I thought let's uh, let's do something a little bit simpler, perhaps, <laughs> rather than something that's mega complex and is going to take hours to sort out. So that's what I thought. It's a Rambler 2, Simon. An afternoon, Simon. Oh, yeah. It's a Rambler 2. <laughs> Mike Atlantis, sunglasses time. I tell you, it's pretty bright in here. If I could turn the lights off, you could, you could see what Mrs. Cruncher has done in here. But uh, a Robert's screwdriver. Raining and nine degrees, which says it's, it's 21 in here, but for some reason it seems to get really hot in this little room. It's probably because of all the stuff I've got in here. It's absolutely rammed. And now we've got to about 50, 50,000 advent calendars in here as well. It's even worse. <laughs> but I've been playing with the Hacker Hunter again today, trying to get, um, get to grips with it, trying to get to the bottom of what's going on. So... Uh, not really making progress on that one. It's a, it's a bit of a head scratcher. Even in Rob Cross, are you? You got a screwdriver, Foxy. You're cooking up some of my chickens. <laughs> Ten degrees in your workshop. Yeah, it's one of the one of the benefits of having a workroom indoors, really. Although I dearly love an outhouse, I really would. I'd love love a, a proper workshop, really. Not a not an adapted bedroom that's. A, a, a workshop, a computer room, and a radio room all in one. It's too, it's too much. I just can't move in here. I've piled a load of stuff out of here for, for the Christmas live streams, but, um, you know. So, yeah, the Hacker Hunter is proving a bit of a pain in the neck. Um, I've been in and uh, I've re put the... Um, the uh, transformer that we took out yesterday, the IF transformer, that's all back in and all, all done and dusted. And I've replaced a few out of tolerance components around it, but um, yeah, it's not that uh, 
It's not coming on very well, really. I've uh, injected a signal at the base of all the IF transistors, and the IF seems to be getting through, although the first IF isn't brilliant, but should, should be getting through. I really don't know what's going on with that. No room to swing a monkey. <laughs> if I swung a monkey in here, he'd hit a fair few things. <laughs> he'd hit it loads of things. Not that I endorse swinging monkeys, of course. So yeah, this is um, this is what we're playing with today. So I oh, better turn that up because you can't hear that. Robert's Rambler too. Being looked after by our friendly goat at the moment. I was going to fix this, but um, you know it's a bit too modern, really. <laughs> What oh, you got a bit of background Christmas music, haven't you? So, um, there's goats of God in it today. They were a bit worried it was going to run away. But this, uh, this was a really horrible and sticky. It was all sticky. It's all sticky when I um, picked it down off the shelves. I don't know why. I think it's. it's Rexine and well, leather cloth and Roberts that never went together. I do like this blue color, mind you. So, Rambler 2, it's Sony uh, an AM radio, long wave, medium wave, and it's in pretty good condition, really. There's, there's one thing that you can't see at the moment, but the background of that is really sun bleached. There's something stuck on the dial. I don't know what that is. Let's see some brown paint. But um, I did give it a wipe over because for some reason, it, it, as I say, gone all sticky. So if you use some of that goo gone, which has done a quite a good job so far, but I need to do a bit more on the back. You can see, I don't know if you can see where it's shiny. So where it's a bit more matte is where I've cleaned it, but this shiny, it's really sticky. It's really tacky. Looks like the colour, like the colour, oh, you like the colour of the Rambler. What's brown and sticky? <laughs> no, there's brown, brown blobs on the top, specks of paint, and the, the lever cloth is sticky. It's not Rexine, it's just padded stuff. But um, it's better, it just needs a, another going over. But uh, I think this is the only Rambler 2 I got. I know, um, I think, is it Dom that's, that's got one or got one coming? I'm not sure. He was looking at one anyway. I don't know if Dom's in at the moment. I did so, yeah. What happened with Wellerman? The Velleman? The Velleman is, is a work in progress. I need to sort out the probes for that. And uh, Doug very kindly sent me a link to some guy in the Ukraine that's uh, made one with a FET in it. But I think I need a diode in it as well. And um, someone in the group, it might have been Nick or I think it was Rob actually sent me a link to, um, oh, what's he called? Restore Old Radios has done, a, done one with a FET in it as well. And that's actually got a diode in as well. So it's sort of, you don't have to switch between um, AF and RF it sort of automatically picks it up, which I think that's probably going to be the one that I'll build. But um, as I say, well, I'm going to do that in another video because I need to get a few more bits. <clears throat> I need to get everything ready to build the probes before I start a video because otherwise it's just going to drag on and on and on and we'll have dozens of um, episodes all on the same thing, which I'm trying to sort of mix it up a little bit. So hopefully that's answered your question. So Rob is saying he doesn't know how he's going to be able to buy any more radios when Brexit comes. I have to pay more to get it to Ireland. Well, I take it you mean to, to get it delivered to Ireland or we met import duty or something? Oh, I really don't know, Rob. I don't know the technicalities of all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we've got a few projects bubbling under that, um, that I've got to, got to do at some stage. So it's all content. So we will get to it. The um, Upatero is not very well. 
I've replaced the components in that, but um, as I said yesterday, it's not really, it's not working at all. It's one of those ones I've already spent longer than I should have done on it, really. But um, I, you know, just out of interest, I was trying to get it working. So anyway, I suppose before we do anything else, we'd better get the um, the special advent calendar open, aren't we? <laughs> A few people have commented that uh, this is a, a great uh, advent calendar. I've got to agree, it's uh, it's a bit unique, isn't it? I have seen them previously, and I, I nearly bought one last year, but um, I say I uh, I went round and bought a load of beers last year. So hopefully, no, he doesn't want to focus today. The beer calm doesn't want to focus. Why don't you want to focus? Probably not enough light over there, maybe. That's better. Let's wait till that focuses a minute. The trouble with the webcam's auto focus and it's um. It just don't want to focus today. Is it dirty? Have I thumbed it? Okay, let's try that. There we go. Okay, so um, our St. Austell's Ales Advent Calendar. Good evening there, uh, Jess. Hi, Dave, how are you? Just got in. Just been talking about you. No, no, but you're you, Patero. Right, so let's get some number three open because it is the 3rd of December. So let me just go past. Of course, the, the penguin is, um, is guarding the beer. <laughs> the Christmas penguin guarding the beer, aren't we? <laughs> Oh dear, I've got to stick some batteries in him actually because I repaired him a couple years ago. Right, number three. Come in, number three. Oh, a bath? A bath I don't know. Never heard that before. What do you reckon, Penguin? Yeah. Lansdowne West Coast IPA again. They love the IPA, don't they? Love the IPA. Right. Let's get the camera back up. We've got to have something to drink, haven't we, as we work? It's like the unwritten rule. That well, is. It is here anyway. <laughs> so yes, I think, do St. Austell's Ales own Bath Ales? I don't know, but Bath Ales is obviously up in, where is Bath? Is Bath North Somerset? Is that what they, is that Bath? It's near Bristol, isn't it really? Bath Ales, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it is Bath, but they do make some really nice beers, Bath Ales, actually. Doesn't really say a lot about it, apart from it's 5%. So there you go, Lansdowne, let's turn old Roberts round, he's certainly swivelling well. <laughs> so I suppose we ought to um, get it down my neck, didn't we? Nice close up on the Santa shirt for you. Let's just find me. <laughs> Hi Luigi, how are you? Right. Another IPA. 
Indian Pale Ale. Yesterday was an a APA. I actually want an American Pale Ale. So this is a big, bold and hoppy. It's quite fizzy. <laughs> not gonna, I'm not going to get it all in in one go again, as per usual. That'll do for a minute. Let's put that out of the way. Cheers, everybody. Happy Christmas. Mm. Oh, so St. Austell part owned Bath Ales, but Bath owns the right to the name. Okay, got you there, Jess. Right, okay. Um, let's just show you over this um, in a bit, uh, bit closer detail a minute. Let's just uh, zoom in. So it's got this uh, quite coarse grain leather cloth, which I actually like. I prefer the coarser grain leather. My camera doesn't like it. <laughs> Yeah, so it's got a coarse grain leather cloth. It's because this is um, blowing the picture out. <laughs> I should take it off of uh, auto, really, and put it back on manual. Um, so, yeah, Robert's Rambler 2. It's not, not a lot to it, really. On, off. LF and MF, low frequency, medium frequency, with basically long wave and medium wave. And we've got a tone button on, off. Tune in. Oh, there's me little... Dots of brown. I don't know if you can see it. It looks like a, a little dot on the on the dial face. It's definitely a bit of um, gloss brown paint. I think there's a few little flecks of it, but that'll come off pretty easy. It's, it is in really good condition actually. All the knobs are there. Front grill. Absolutely dent free. It's a couple little bits of paint need touching up, but nothing, nothing too much. Strap, perfect, no issues there. Apart from something, something on it underneath there. I don't know what that's all about. It looks like a bit more paint, or well, I wouldn't like to say what that was. Back's fine. Rear grill's all intact. You can see there's components inside, so that's a good thing. Underneath, we've got our little turntable still focus and this has got a nine volt power jack in the side as well so you can run this on an external power supply although well, i wouldn't really recommend it unless you get the actual roberts one which is going to set you back an arm and a leg it ain't the cheapest so let's zoom back out oh i was going to show you the um dial wouldn't I uh, hopefully you you might be able to see that uh, let's get the light down a bit so that in behind should be blue but it's like a horrible mucky yellow color so we're gonna need to reverse the um, dial plate again let's see if I can get it on the overhead camera because that's that camera's not showing it up very well So can you see that? It's a horrible yellowy colour. So it should it should be uh, light blue. <laughs> so what's happened? The sun has just bleached it. But we'll have a look at that when we take it out of the case in a minute. Right, let's zoom back out a bit then. Let's stick my ugly mug back in there. Hi Barry, how are you? Paddy, how are you doing? Making some strong IPOs over there, IPAs, Doug. 10 to 12%, now you're talking. That's my sort of drink. 
I don't think we get him quite that strong over here, um, Doug. Okay, so Theo's on the vinegar trail at the moment for some reason. Okay. Custom dial back would look like I don't like those though. I prefer to keep them. You know me, Brett. Uh, for some reason, I've um, not gone picture in picture. I went full screen. All oh, those weird things are happening tonight. Yeah, so I do prefer to keep stuff as original as possible. I don't like changing the lever cloth or messing about with the background. You know, end of the day, this radio is going to be um, looked at hopefully in many, many years to come. And uh, if you alter it, people aren't going to be that interested in it, I don't think. But then I'm just fussy, you know. I like originality, Brett, I think is what I'm saying. If it's your own radio and you, you're going to have it to use and keep and you're not really th looking at authenticity, you can do what you want with it. Hmm. Nice. I don't think it's as nice as the American parallel that we had. Ooh, got a spider there. Yeah, the Eureka APA was a little bit nicer. But this is still a nice beer. I've kept the bottles. I don't know why I'm I'll end up collecting all 24 bottles when I have a rerun at the end, can't we? Spanky, how you doing? A nice radio. I'm Michael Stevens. How you doing? Our staff, Margot, has attacked our tree. Oh, your staff, your staffy. <laughs> no lights powered. She's sat looking ready to attack. <laughs> <laughs> right so let's have a look then so we've got a nine volt power supply it says pin negative so we should go to plug in if i can find it or um power supply to this except it's one of their mega long reach jobbies so that won't reach Oh well, we could, if I can find it, plug my extension thingamajigger in and um, connect up to the battery terminals. I just need to um, make sure the polarity is right when I plug it in. get my head around this because stuff like this confuses me and I don't want to stick reverse polarity on it so it's 9 volts and I've got it set at 18 at the moment it's been working on the hunter Let's set the current limit right to the bare minimum so it's just just keeping in so let me think so this is going to be negative and that's positive I think this has got a bloody blue wire in it again isn't it It's got to be red as positive. Let me have a look at a normal battery. Let me look at PP9. I want to get it on the power supply so we can see what current it's drawing, really. So that is the positive. So that needs to be positive. And that negative. Okay. Just bear with me. You thought I'd have sorted this out earlier, really, wouldn't you? I did sort of get myself fairly organised today, which is a, makes a change. I think possibly I'm going to have to reverse these, but we'll see. So that should be positive and that negative. Okay, so according to that, we've got absolutely no voltage there whatsoever for some reason ah that's because I want touching the
Hmm. That ain't working. Why is that then? Got any? Uh, should be centre pin positive. Is that because I've got the limit turned down too much? Just turn it up a little bit. Hmm. So either a wire has come off here, which it hasn't. I'm fault finding my power supply now. So we've got nine volts there. No, we have got nine volts now. What's going on with this? So it looks like my uh, adapters come apart inside again. That's great. I pulled this apart a few times. It's only one of these cheap PP9 connectors. They're pretty rubbish, to be fair. Oh, ZX, are you? Blue wire. Black and red, it should be. I know. It's caught me out a few times. Well, I say I've hot glued the hell out of this, so I can't see how that's not um, not making contact, really. <laughs> no, that's not going to work. Okay. Get rid of that. Back to square one. Let's just stick normal, normal leads on it, as I was going to do to start with. <sighs> See if it is the right way round. Yeah, okay, right. We're in. Um, let's get the active antenna if I can, bear with me. the active antenna because um, got no hope of getting any signal in here without it really I should permanently install all these antennas really I've got an idea to do that but um, unfortunately the wholesalers out of stock of the bit of kit that I want to buy. I'm trying to buy a patch panel for it. So I'm going to use the um, Sony AN1 active antenna, which is outside. Switch it on, medium wave. I'm going to use the uh, ferrite coupler. So just plug that in. So if I hold that, this volume's a bit scratchy. Evening, Nathan.
loads of interference. So my lights interfering, the oscilloscope's interfering, Father Christmas is interfering, my uh, shirt is probably interfering with it. Dial scale looks bang on anyway. That's Radio 4. Or any other country in the world. That achievement drew this response from Dr. Fauci. You know, I love the Brits. They're great. They're good scientists. But they just took the data from the Pfizer company and instead of scrutinizing it really, really carefully, they said, OK, let's approve it. That's it. And they went with it. But that view was dismissed by those familiar with the way the UK regulator, the MHRA, works. Professor Stephen Evans of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine believes Dr. Fauci's comments are a response to criticism of the US regulator for being too slow to authorise the Pfizer vaccine. But I don't think you probably know about the process that the NHRA has gone through that has been critical. There you go. It appears to be fully working, which is good news in a way. But um, what I thought we'd do is is the alignment, and that's pretty simple on one of these. Evening, uh, Paul, how are you? Paul Collins and Nathan, where did I get my Christmas radio from? You like it? This, this was actually um, in the range in Exeter. I don't know, about, did I buy this last year? I don't know. I, I I try and buy tacky Christmas stuff whenever I go to the shops if I can. <laughs> and Mrs. Cruncher provides the wardrobe, obviously. But yeah, what I was thinking was to to take this out of the case and try and mount it in like a Roberts radio, because I've got a couple spare um, well not spare but really bad cases on on Roberts radios. So uh, I was going to um, mount this in a Roberts. <laughs> I might do that as a bit of a laugh at some stage. <laughs> a firing range. <laughs> you love it, Brett, really. It's lovely, isn't it? Listen to those lovely tunes. <laughs> there you go, Nathan. That's just for you, that was. Right, so... Um, yeah, what I was intending to do then with this one is we'll get it out of the case. We'll check the caps. We won't necessarily replace them. End of the day, uh, it's got some of that horrible glue on it. We need to give it a service. And um, I'll probably get rid of this one. I'll stick it on my website and just flog it on. But, um, you know, we'll give it a full service and we'll have a go at the alignment. So I did, I did sort out all the alignment info for you. We could do a bit of cap bingo on it. Uh, where's, me, where's me bits? So this, uh, this is from the like eighties into the nineties, this radio. So it's not, it's not as old as it looks really. There's an auction going on at the moment. I've got a load of auto bids in because I can't be asked anymore. It's, it's just, <laughs> just went on for too long. I'm just getting all the notifications coming through now. Right, let's find my screen. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I managed to get the technical data sheet from it. Cheers everybody that's just joined. So there he is. So we've got two integrated circuits in it. I don't think there's any separate um, transistors in this. I think it's all done by ICs. It's not got a massive output, 750 milliwatts. That's the same as the later 
or FM3. And I believe this um, this case will fit an RFM3, so you can just drop an RFM3 straight in this case if you wanted one in this colour. Just if anyone fancies that. 72 mil speaker, 8 ohms impedance. Unfortunately, it's a plastic one, not my favourite. PP9, and it's got a socket for the external battery. So to remove it, pretty straightforward. Disconnect loudspeaker leads, remove the securing screws, and pull it out the top of the case. So that's easier said than done, because I can see there's a load of nastiness has dropped down in that gap. So we're going to probably need the spudger or a knife to get it out. Hopefully you are on this. Let me check that you are definitely on my screen. Yes, you are. Okay, so there's a board layout on there, which we're not really going to need. Um, we've got the schematic. So, as I say, we've got two large ICs. This, this is pretty much a radio on a chip. All the IF and RF is pretty much done in there. There's no transistors external to it. We've got um, ceramic filters in this. There's one there, CF2. I believe there's another one somewhere. Where's the other one gone? You're probably shouting at me now because you can see it. But um... No, I can't see, see CF1 off the top of my head. I am a little bit away from the screen there. No, just can't see it. So this is our switches, two ferrite rods, long wave, medium wave, fed into this. This does the RF and IF, and it spits it out the end here on pin 9, and then sticks it down into the volume pot, then into the audio IC, and out to the speaker. So it's very, very straightforward. I mean, end of the day, if, if this radio goes wrong, it's usually one of these two chips and someone stuck the voltage up at the wrong way, normally. Very similar to the RFM3, how it works. In that, if you, if you reverse polarity, it, you blow it up. You can see the power comes straight into the audio IC. So if you get it, uh, get it wrong and reverse it, you're going to blow up the audio IC. And if you're really unlucky, you'll blow this one up as well. But uh, normally it's, it's the audio IC that's going to go first. And we've got some alignment info. Now this is pretty straightforward alignment on this. Um, so we, we need a coupling loop. 468 is shown as the IF, which is a little bit strange. Let's just get that up a little bit higher so I can see the bottom tab. So here's our alignment info. So signal injected for a coupling loop, which you've got a oscilloscope via a 100 nanofarad cap to test point three. So this is doing the IF, the first three. So step one, uh, 468 kilohertz, pointer at the high frequency end, adjust L10 for maximum output and L9 for maximum output. And that's on the oscilloscope. And then three is to do it again <laughs> so that's the if alignment very very straightforward that's because it's all done on on chips so so it's pretty straightforward to align then we've got the rf alignments so this is dial alignment really high frequency and low frequency l6 is probably going to be the antenna coil probably so we need to slide the antenna coil along a bit worth one of those things I don't like moving the antenna core, but we we can do because it's it's waxed on on these normally. So this just gives us an idea of where the adjustment points are. I don't know where this test point is. Where is test point three? I can't see it on that diagram. Yes, L six and L seven are the um, antenna cores. This is our polyvericon. So C24 and 25 are the trimmers for the oscillator, or the aerial and the oscillator. 
We've got another trimmer there. Ah, three. So test point three is at R17, the bottom of R17. Anyway, let's um, get back to the main screen. Ah, Simon spotted it. <laughs> the IF is dictated by the crystal filter. Um, to be honest, Doug, I would think probably it's gone gone uh, far east at this stage. I think the cases and that are still made in this country. I'm not sure about the boards, though. Because I think the RFM3, I think when they went to the um, ICs, they went abroad. So let's, um, let's get apart without further ado. No, that's not Philips, so it must be PosiDrive. Yes, it is. So it's just two screws hold the chassis in. One there. And one there. Hi, David Roberts, how are you? TMK meters? What's that? The IF is dictated by the crystal filters. Oh, okay, Simon. So it's still got the uh, IF amplification, amplification on that chip, and uh, so let's pull the speaker leads off. Um, we'll unscrew this one. So number one policy is it? So yeah, the side cheeks are quite dry, so that's gonna either need some Danish oil or some tea coil or maybe just some wax furniture polish. Chuck these in. Fifteen. I did. Um, I did watch your uh, video last night, or the early hours of this morning, I think, Simon. Actually, I managed to wake up in the early hours and couldn't get back to sleep. So I thought I'll watch Simon's video. <laughs> so yeah, Simon has got a new video out there on a very nice meter that he's now got that he didn't have a nice meter to start with but uh he's made a nice meter out of it my battery's running down so let's see if we can get this thing out of the case without damaging it this is where sean's mallet would come in useful i think this is there he goes so all i'm doing is just putting the screwdriver in and pushing against the aluminium top plate and as you can see, luckily, it's come out. But um, it's not that nice in there. So not a lot to the case. As I say, we've got a plastic speaker inside. They sound okay, but, um, you know, it's 750 milliwatts. It's not exactly going to be earth-shattering, is it? But uh, it's a nice looking little compact radio. Make, make an ideal gift. The only problem is obviously there's not a lot on uh, medium wave anymore or long wave. Okay. So as I say, there really, really isn't a lot we can do to this. Let's get the overhead camera in so you can have a closer look at it. Let's zoom out a little bit. So this is our polyvericon, and these are a pain in the neck in these Roberts radios. Uh, what happens is, is the plastic dielectric inside breaks down. It's like a polythene uh, material, and they start flaking off, 
and get scratchy and distorted and shorting and you really can't do nothing with them apart you can try taking them apart but once they've gone like that they've had it and you've got to change it and you can't get new ones of these if anyone knows of a source of new ones of these i'd love to get some i've got some that i got from poland i think a while back and they will work in these radios but they're not ideal now i think this is actually an a dual one i think this does fm as well but they're obviously not using the fm side it looks a bit big for just am hmm and most of these are made by i'm trying to think of the name now toco toco inc people that made the coils so yeah if you've got one with a scratchy um tuning then there's not a lot you can do not with these things because they just fall apart tip petrol on it you just spanky <laughs> thank you mate <laughs> beeswax polish you needed another meter is it the rfm3 that has cardboard chassis tugs no i don't think so i think the r600 has possibly i'm not sure there, there is no the r r606 I'm not 100% sure, Brat. As I say, I don't do a massive amount of um, Robert stuff these days. Not as far as restoration goes. So let's flip the board. Oh, we've got our plastic bits of designs. Actually, we need to take them off anyway, so let's get them off. I'm going to pull the knobs off and take the top plate right off, actually. And you can see what I mean by the um, yucky diarrhea coloured um, top there. Or won't it? <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to take that off. Which is a bit tricky. But we need to take it off, get rid of the um, double-sided tape underneath it, reverse it, and then we'll have a blue, nice blue background left. Yeah, the really sort of basic radio now, but unfortunately, how it, how they went. So this is the circuit board. Again, you know, don't get me wrong; they are nice little radios. I wouldn't have it if I didn't like it. <laughs> well, I say that I have got some. Hi, oh, George. Back from shopping, George. Nice. Christmas or food? Okay, so I don't know if you can see on the board here. Let me just zoom you in a bit further. Can you see there's a hell of a lot of um, stuff not populated? So this board, I think, was used for the RFM3 as well because there's lots of places for more coils. We've got the dual ganged tuning cap, which has got FM in it as well, which obviously isn't used. So I think this board was uh, used for both. These purple caps, mm, who are they made by? Telecon. They can be okay, these. And I've got some brand new ones of these. The only ones that suffer tend to be these bigger ones. But um, any 10 microfarads are also a bit suspect. We've got some nice um, conductive glue on there as well, look. Just for good measure. So here's uh, IC2, which is the amplifier. TBA 820M. And here's our... Um, main IC or the radio IC 
with the front end and the IF amplification in it. And the little orange thing you can see in there is that ceramic um, filter. These do, do fail as well. They can go open circuits. If you've got a dead radio and it's not the chips, it's worth checking that little ceramic um, filter. What else can we say about it? Not a lot, really. There's not a lot to do. I mean, there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight caps. Yeah, we've got a thousand microfarad. That's most likely going to be gone. But we'll, uh, we'll have a look, shall we? We should be able to do some of these in circuit. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can do them in circuit. Ugh. See if we can sort this light out, that's better. So what's the difference between this and the RFM3? Uh, FM is the different spanky. <laughs> Christmas can go do one. Hi Wenlock, good, very good early morning to you. Evening, Derek, how are you? Been having your dinner. Mine's later on, Derek. Save the gap bad caps for a later capacitor bingo session at one evening. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, what, it, what I was saying, uh, Simon, was this board was used for this one and the RFM3, I think. So there's a lot of components that are missing that are related to FM. That's why they're not in there. Okay, so let's have a look. Where's our first one? The suspect, as far as I'm concerned, is here. Let's see if we can hook this on. So I don't know if it'll read in circuit or not. Let's have a look. Oh, it's going to be a pain. Let's try it anyway. So that one's gone up to 1581. So is that, um, is that in, uh, that's more than 20% in it. That's a 10% of it. Yeah, that one's gone. That one has gone a bit high. <laughs> we did blow one up, Derek, didn't we? Like that. I stuck it underneath the whiskey tumbler and uh, nearly blew the whiskey tumbler up, actually. So that's not a good sign. That one has gone high, although it's working, you know. Let's try this 470, see if it'll measure that. Did you spy the space station? So 470 has gone up by 100 microfarads. This ain't looking too good capacitor wise, is it? What's that one there? 1016. These can be dodgy, the 10s. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we've got a fairly high ESR on the 10, 2.2. That should be below 1. Uh, we've got another one back here. What's that one? 100 at 10 volts. Hundred and twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Just intolerance. A one. They're normally okay, the ones. And a point two. The one is at the limit of this, this tester. ESR is a little bit high, but that's to be expected. 
This won't measure the point two for sure. What else have we got here? Another hundred. Hundred and thirteen, but the ESR is a bit high on that. Which here is only one ping. We've got two over here, we've got another one well, there's I don't know, ten sixteen and that looks like another another four seventy then. It says in circuit leaky, well it is in circuit. The last one is a ten. Oh, hello. We've got a bad cap there. Ooh. <laughs> that one ain't good. No, the ruddy clouds came back so you couldn't spy the station. Oh, my God. Apparently, it's supposed to be visible at the moment from, from down here in the southwest. Well, it was last week. But I did miss it. So we've got one howler there. Which is that 10 at 16. So we'll get that one out. The rest of them I think can stay in there for now. Or shall we get them out? Uh, what have we got? I've got an hour. I wanted to try and do an alignment on it, really. Let's fire up the desoldering tool and then I'll, I'll uh, ever think about that. But that one's got to definitely go. That one's way out. They're all fairly high. The thousand's high. Really, the thousand and that one are the two worst ones. Go for it. It's supposed to be snowing up on the moors uh, overnight tonight, but I think it's too too much rain. Quite nice that IPA. It's quite nice. Bit of a tidy up. Don't know what that was. It sounded uh, worse than it was, I think. Let's get rid of our battery. Switch your oscilloscope on because we're going to need that in a minute. Just waiting for the desolder to fire up. Have you ever worked the ISS, Graham? No, I haven't, Nathan. I, I have been trying to, um, well, I've been, I've been sort of doing a little bit of research. And uh, I, I don't know, it comes over of an evening and I'm usually crashed in the evening. So, uh, but uh, I would like to work it, Nathan, but I haven't yet. I think um, Victor has, well, I don't know if he's worked it, but he's certainly received it. I've not received it at all. You can only catch it at certain times of the day when it's above the horizon, I believe. Okay. We're up to temperature. Let's, um, are these marked on the board? Okay, so the biggest. These two are stuck, which is a pain. So yeah, it looks like the um, solid line is negative. Solid, let's get them out. 
Let's get him out. I assume I've got him in stock. I've got most things in stock. That's a 10. Four seventy. He's stuck with glue. It's easier to do these as I go, really, because otherwise I'm going to get stuck if I shotgun the whole lot out. <clears throat> There's a lot of people say don't um, don't change him for the sheer hell of it. You don't have to change him, really. But um, they are pretty short. That's me. Four seventy with lots of nastiness underneath it. And have we got a small four seventy? It's got a huge one. Sixteen volts. What's that one? 10 volts. I'm going to have to scrape all that nastiness out from underneath it in a minute. Scrape that off. There's no point putting a new uh, cap back up on top of that nasty stuff. Corrosive glue. As I say, if I was selling this, I would recap it anyway. So I am going to sell it, I suppose, at some stage. So let's recap it now, if I've got them all. So we've got the green and red wire go to there. Need to remember that. Let's zoom you out a little bit. A bit close, am I? sort of the wrong one there. <laughs> What's this one then? Let's make sure I got that back in the right place. That goes to there. Okay. That goes to the negative for some reason. Hmm. 100 at 10 volts. I've actually got room to get all of this on the desk here. 100. 10 volts. Didn't have any of these. I had to buy a load of these in the other day. Hundred at 10 volts. What else have we got here? We've got one here. This is one microfarad at 50.
Oh Christ, that made me jump. <laughs> Headphone wearers, apologies for that. So I'm tighten up this one, it's flopping about everywhere. What's this one here? This is this, oh, 47 at 10. Seven at sixteen is the smallest I got, I think. Done that was done. Right. Forty seven at ten. Some more gunk to remove. <sighs> Careful, and they scratched off the uh, markings there. Uh, so another 47 at 16, because we haven't got any 10s. Oh, hang on, that's 470. Ooh, Nelly, <laughs> Nelly jumped in a bit big then. Wait, no, 470, I was right. I was right. 470 at 16, so that's uh, the other way around. Okay. I thought it was one of those point two things in here. Was he wrong? Ten at sixteen. More gloopy glue. <sighs> so a thousand. What voltage is that one? A uh, thousand at ten volts. If we go here, that's a bit of a funny size. I don't have many ten volts. It's got a thousand at. What's this one? Sixteen volts. That's about the same size. Gee, that's uh, some of the caps that Doug gave me, I believe. And the last one down here. I think I thought there's a point point two two on here somewhere, but I was obviously wrong. A hundred at ten.
Okay, might be the RFM3 that's got the 2 in it, the 0.22. So let's swap you back onto the overhead camera. Hi Aston, how are you? No worry mate, <laughs> we're good. How you keeping? Uh, batteries are going to go any minute in my um, microphone. So let me just plug that into some backup power. Radio Cruncher Marketplace, what's going on? <laughs> Bet you still buy my stuff. It makes me wonder whether you are actually selling anything, Benji. But obviously this is not um, this is not a place for you to advertise your wares, Benji, as you you are obviously aware. But you know, it is Christmas, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> it is Christmas, I suppose. Right. I'm just going to double check that I've not got a 0.22 in here that I've pulled out and put the wrong one in for any reason. A 1 at 50, 10 at 16, 47 at 10, that's a huge one. That's a big one. Big one, big one. So I've got three, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I am right. Okay, I am right. We're good as you are. Let's get my box of caps out of the way. Soldering iron on, desoldering tool. I don't know why I had that on for so long, because um, we haven't done any desoldering for quite some time, but I still had it on. I must love the sound of that fan. That's my head in that fan. Oh, hello. There's another one there. Three, six, seven, eight. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, nine, two, four, six, eight. There's another. One. Ah, that's one over here. Nine. Okay. Just trying to count for all me all my caps. Get these soldered up then. Do 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 do. Sounds quiet without any music. Let's get some music on. <laughs> it's Crunch of Christmas. Redo that one that I um, desoldered accidentally.
think that's all of them. Take a commission, I could do, couldn't I? <laughs> go to go crunch your crackers. <laughs> well, I was say it's it's a job to know what to, what videos to do, to be honest. But uh, I'm just really pulling out whatever I uh, can get my hands on, really. As I say, I've got to got to revisit a few things. Certainly the uh, signal tracer, we need to revisit that. So I think uh, Mr. Spanky has um, got himself one of those, so he's getting himself one. So we need to look at some of the ideas for our probes. Now the uh, the battery's up to full full power again now, so no worries there. So I've got to reconnect these. Let me get my goggles on because that's a tweezer job, and my tweezers are put away again, nice and tidy. I don't like this tidy thing. Let me get my speaker. My speaker. Ah, oh, what have I done with that then? What have we done with, with me? Little case of all my spanners and screwdrivers and everything in. Oh well. We'll have to use these. I got a pair here. Of course I have a pair here. Right. Just gonna pop a little bit of flux on that point there where these two wires join. and grab them both at the same time. Just check my other joints. No bridges. Caps all look pretty straight. Good to go. Right, okay. Let's um <laughs> let's tr see if it works. Let's see if it works. Obviously not going to have time to do some of the other bits I wanted to do to it now, unfortunately, because we've had to change the caps.
Hang on, we'll dial cord issue. No! The dial cord's just gone pop for some reason. Oh. No! Game over! Uh -uh. Right, the dial cord has decided to um, come right off. Great. It obviously didn't want us to get finished, did it? That's a pain. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, can you see that? Let me just get you under the overhead camera. Yes. The dial cord has let go. Brilliant. Now, where's the spring on this thing? Or is the spring sprung? I'm sure there should be a spring on there somewhere. Is that pinged off? Did anyone see a spring spring? Not a spring steen, a spring spring. What a pain. <laughs> you knew. Now, where the hell has that spring gone? We've got a fairly clear bench here, but I cannot for the life of me see a spring anywhere. I'm pretty sure it should have a spring. And nobody's seen it spring. Nobody's seen the spring spring. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, it should have a spring. So I need to find a spring and some dial cord that will fit it. Well, at least the um, little plastic lug is still there. I thought I felt something ping as I was um, putting one of the caps in. Must have been just hanging in there, just ready to jump off at a moment's notice. Right, let's just squeeze that off. Oh, well, so it doesn't look like we're going to get this one finished today, does it? Because I've got half an hour left. And I was going to do the alignment and all sorts of nice things. I should not have listened to George and just cracked on and um, changed the two dodgy caps. And then I'm, I might have not pinged the, uh, <laughs> the spring off. Oh, well. One of those things... The joys of it. I'm just trying to squeeze this back to uh, normality. It's like a little crimped on piece that they've used to squeeze it in instead of doing a knot in it. I wonder where that spring has gone. I really do need that spring. I'm in trouble else. Hmm. 
It must be here somewhere because it was working just now. Let me just get my light over here. See if it's pinged off on the floor somewhere. I can't see it though. It would have either hit me or hit the back of the bench somewhere. I'm sure if we play the video back, we, we can see it spring off somewhere. Right. Let me get my spring box. <laughs> Welcome back, Nathan. Hi, Johnny, how are you? <laughs> Spectre, how you doing? How you doing, Dave? The turn up during spring cleaning. Yeah. Yeah, I'll spring into action. Just trying to think, so it would have been it would have sprung towards me, I'd have thought. It's definitely not um not attached to me. It's not gone in my pocket of me shirt. No. Okay, let's find a spring. I've got a box of springs here, and I do keep any springs. That looks good. This could be the one. It's a bit rusty, but you know, needs must and all that. I do tend to keep um, any springs I come across and they usually go in this section here because that's the smallest one. This is a Duratol kit you can pick up, but um, most of them are too big for this sort of work. They'd be all right for valve radios, but um, for these, they're a little bit too small. That's quite tense, that spring. Let's try that one. That's quite tight as well. Hmm. The thing is, I haven't got another one of these radios to compare with, really. I'm going to go with that one. So I've got my spring. Now I need some dial cord. And can I find my dial cord? There we go. So that's the stuff that I use for this. Twenty pound breaking strain back in line from the local fish and tackle shop. The only pain in the ass with these is is this um, dial pointer is is super glued on. Pain in the neck. Okay, so let me get me bearings. Let's tie this one on here. So I'll pass it through the eye twice. Now I've not gone for a really taut spring because this is only plastic. There's no metal involved in this at all. It's just plastic, plastic rubbish, unfortunately. But um, if you put too much strain on it, you just snap the lug clean off the pulley wheel. So let's see if we can put a 
brand new dial cord on live just for the hell of it, shall we? What's the matter with me? Why, why do I put myself through this? Why? <laughs> so that goes through there, in there. Just going to cut, cut a bit off. So round there, round there, round there. Round there, round twice. That should be enough. Right. Let's start threading. So we used to go round. Nice and tight. Where's my tweezers? Let's get this one out of the way. They're pretty straightforward. So down that one. Ah! It's just pinged off again. Boing, said Zebedee. This spring might not be uh, taut enough, but we'll see. So it goes around that one. Christmas restring, lovely. So let me see, it goes. Oh, bum. Bum bum. I really ought to tape that on, didn't I? Make my life a bit easier. So it goes in there, comes back around, goes in there, one, two, three, back up in around there. This is where I find out I've cut it too short, isn't it? <laughs> I think I might have done. Would you believe that? I have cut it too short. Well, I actually haven't cut it too short. I've just done my knot too big there. Let's get this other stuff out of the way and see if I've got enough. Do it. 
It's about tying yourself in knots, isn't it? <laughs> right, let's try again. What I need somehow is to fix that spring there. I know I might be able to do that in a minute. So I need to just double check that I've got enough um, cord here. Left it a bit fine, unfortunately. Bear with me, people. I can't. Uh, I can't. I can't check the chat now. Hopefully, we've got some moderators nearby. I don't seem seen any moderators today. Paul sort of came and went. Okay. Have I actually left this too short or not? Ah. Every time we get near the crunch point, it gives way. Oh, look at that. I'm probably, I'm probably four mil short. Oh, what a pain. Okay, so we're gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to splash out on a bit more dial cord now. How are we doing on the chat anyway? You do swear in a nice way. <laughs> Gone back to 45 minutes, no spring. Really spanky. Oh, I don't know where that's gone then. I do not know where the mystery spring has gone. It's probably in, it'd probably end up in, in my beer spanky, I suppose. Simon, actually. It'd probably end up in my beer. Okay, um, actually, one of the reasons I've got, I haven't got enough is because I've done this not here too mental. Let me get my goggles on, see if we can get this done. I did have, actually have enough pretty much to the, the millimetre, but um, being I've wound it all round, it's just a case of this spring. Can I wind that off? Yeah, I was a bit over generous with my uh, spring knot. So let me get the goggles back on. This could be continued tomorrow, actually, this one. <laughs> to be continued, I'm certainly not going to have a chance to do the alignment on it now. Which is a shame. Hmm. Well, that should. Pull out of there, but it's not. I really don't know what I've done with my um, tweezers and my little trimming tools. They're all in the same container. I might have popped them in the other room, actually. For safety. 
Oh, let's have a look here. Hmm. I need a little pin or something. We use a transistor. <laughs> What a great idea, was it really? Dismounting the pulley while snugging up the dial cord could make life easier. Retention cord on, remount a pulley. Worked on your dial, so really work from the, um, the solid end back, uh, Dave, I think is what you're saying. Not the springy bit. I can hear the cooker going on for my tea. <laughs> mm. No, I think we're just going to go with a, a new piece of dial cord. And uh, I'm just going to have to follow the... Uh, Yeah, it's a shame because I did get all of that right. It's just I've got that extra bit there that I don't need really. <laughs> oh well, sod it. So let's try it the other way around to see if we can make life easier. Um, just tie a loop in the end. You're stretching the spring business a bit far. Hey! How you doing, Sean? Welcome, mate. Right, let's uh, tighten that up a bit. Hi, Stephen, how are you? Stephen Sharp. Spring Hunter. Service sheet, we've got that one, Sean. A dial cord Christmas special. <laughs> uh, apologies if I've missed anybody out there. I see uh, about a few joiners. You're playing Christmas tunes on your keyboard, Rob. Okay, so we've got our little loop in. No. This goes around that way. I'm just going to go get a bit of tape in a minute. I'm just going to get my black tape just to um, keep this in place. So if I can find my insulation tape, it's never going to be where I want it to be, though, is it? So actually, something I need to put on my shopping list is some insulation tape. I've got amalgamating tape. I've got PTFE tape. Oh, there he is. But hardly any insulation tape left. Whew. It is getting hot in here again now. Eh? I've got a sweat on. It's a good time to remove the yellow dial face. Your spring hit you between the eyes in Luton, Georgie, did it? <laughs> Flipping thing. Sp sprung duck technique. <laughs> what the? It is sod's law, isn't it? I bet you it's in my beer or something. 
I'll get to the bottom of my beer and it'll be in there. Anyway, let's just cut off a few bits of insulation tape just to help me get this thing strung with beer all blooming night out. It's much easier to string these things when you've got the cameras on, as, as I'm sure you know. Well, you don't know, but I'm sure you can guess. <laughs> right. Okay, let's cut about 50 miles of this thing off this time because I don't want to get that too short again or the exact size again. Was the door went then when Mrs. Cruncher was in the loo? It's <laughs> still coming unraveled, even though I've got the tape on it. It just doesn't want to be done. This is saying, No, you've pulled my spring off. I'm not happy with you. Go away. I hate these things. You know dial cords are my worst nightmare. But, 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 luckily I've got Christmas music going so I'm not too bad. There's a little tiny trimmer pot in there that's right in the way. Now we're in business. So in there, down there. One, two, three. Around there. Come on. You know you want to. Around there. Part of the issue is I've got the um, the wheel tensioned the wrong way for where, for the way I'm winding it really. So that goes over there. Then our a ten foot long dial cord back through there. Christmas doll cord special, as Sean said. <laughs> Flipping heck. What a nightmare. 
Okay. Now what we want to try and do is pop the spring on there. Cut off this 100 foot length. monster I'm very very careful not to swear here <laughs> but it needs a bit of swearing believe me this needs swearing it really is a fiddly ass job. I've said ass now, look, there you go. I feel a bit better now. I did have my knot badge in the Cub Scouts. Don't know how I got it though. Has he done it? <laughs> oh yes. It's a bit tight, a bit tight, but some um, spring ain't brilliant, but it'll it'll bed in. Right, I've only, I've only done it. I've only gone and done it. Yay! <laughs> oh dear. So what have I got to do? What's Sean saying? Read up. Rob Hall sent you something. Rob! <laughs> Sorry, people, I didn't have the webcam on either. Thank you, Rob. Christmas sticky tape. Oh, I used all my Christmas sticky tape last year. Oh, dear. What a game that was. So, uh, it's done. It's on there. 
the spring is a bit um, slacker than the original one, which is why I've stretched it. It's not under a massive tension, but um, I like to try and put a little blob of super glue on the knots normally, but I don't know if I can get in there to do that. Of course, we've still got to get this damn pointer on. So, as I say, they um, super glue these in, which is good of them. But um, it does sound quite tight, doesn't it? Tight is better than slack, though, with a dial cord, as I'm sure those of you that have done one before know. This ain't going to go e e easily either. You get the gist. It's going to move along a bit. And then it'll come out the thing and you are uh... I'm not going to glue that back on today people it's half past seven but the dial cord is done flipping thing <sighs> well, what a game. What a game. <laughs> right, well, we know it still works after we've recapped it. I've got to finish the dial cord off. I've just got to... Uh, align this and get it put on the um, thing. I think it's uh, gone a bit tight and got bound up here, so I need to sort that out as well. But it's done. <laughs> it's done. What a nightmare. Have I got any beer? I've got, got a bit of beer left anyway, so cheers, everybody. Do the faceplate first. Yeah, I know the faceplate does need to get done. What I'll do is, before I glue this back on, let's just take that off a minute. I'll whip this off, and it's it's going to be a pig to get off as usual. Oh, I don't know. It's actually coming apart fairly easily. So it's just a case of uh, dribbling a bit of IPA down there normally, but oh, actually this one's, this one's just coming off on my finger now. It's coming off fairly easily, that one, so. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so just a case of cleaning this double-sided tape off and uh, that'll come up nice and blue, unlike that side. Yuck. Oh, yeah, I think that'll peel off quite easily as well, that. Oh, 
There we go. <laughs> So just a case of using a bit of goo gone on that to get all that off. So I'll, I'll hit it with a load of this and that, that, that gets off quite nicely. Anyway, we need to put that one to bed for now. And uh, we're going to revisit that one. Possibly tomorrow, I don't know, we'll see. I'll get the dial pointer put back on and we'll maybe do the alignment on it tomorrow. I'll give it a bit of a clean up in the day if I get a chance. So let's um, clear the decks and get the... Um, that was a pain in the neck, that dial cord going. We'd have been done on that by now. But, you know, that's how it is. That's the, the law according to sod, isn't it? Sod's law. Okay, time to get the advent calendars out, the last two. Because we've already done the first one, I'm drinking it. <laughs> I'm, dr I'm drinking the advent calendar. So if you haven't um, joined before, you'll know that we've got three advent calendars to open this year. We've got this... Um, is that in the way? Yeah, that's in the way. We've got this humongous um, Revel Technic remote control helicopter advent calendar. So, what are we on? We're on number three. Come in number three. The back's all coming apart here. Number three, anybody? <laughs> this one's pretty easy to see, actually, isn't it? <laughs> Bottom, middle. Bottom left. Let's zoom in then and look, see what we've got in there. Well, that's not exciting, is it? That ain't very exciting. <laughs> Just a metal ferrule by the looks of it. They're really skimping on this, aren't they? Okay, so that looks like it goes. Just goes on top of the um, rotor by the looks of it. Which is over here. Oh, I've just dropped the other bit of the rotor. It's a bit of an unusual one, isn't it, this? So that goes up through there. It's a little tiny fly in here again now. <laughs> Evening Chris, how are you? Was the spring in your beer? I've not got, got to the bottom of it yet. Yes. So that just slips over the top like that. So there we go. It looks like <laughs> I can see roughly what we've got tomorrow coming out. <laughs> right, okay. And finally... Finally, uh, Mr. Weirer. 
And they'll be number three. Just trying to see it myself. It's not over where I am, is it? No. Santa's knee. Santa's knee's 23. It's 23. Below number two. Yes. Below number two. Ah. So who was that below number two? Brett got it, I think. Oh, David on the green parcel was there there just before. <laughs> I think David was was in there quickest. So number three. Ooh. It looks like we got a 5.5 .5 hexagon. Was that Torx? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't look like Torx. It looks like some sort of spline, but I suppose that's what Torx is. Let's get her put in then. I wonder if it's... No, so it's not... It says it's 5.5, .5, but it obviously doesn't hold the bits. Just pop on there then. These are quite clip, quite good because if <laughs> if you click them, it actually locks them. Turn them back the other way, and they come off. Very clever. German engineering, you see. They are nice, Brett, aren't they? Because it um, just means you can turn them with your fingers as well. Yeah, nice. There you are then. It's gradually going to build up over the weeks. So I'll let you. I'll let you come back to my level. Oh, I've got a bit of a bit of a tinting going on there. Look, woohoo! Tinting. <laughs> so I can bring you back to my lovely Christmas shirt. And uh, thanks again for the super chats today, Rob. That was, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, thank you, Rob. Hope you've all uh, enjoyed that. I've earned my tea now. Yeah, certainly have, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good entertainment for you guys but a, a real um, pain in the backside for me really but um at least we've got it restrung i hope we've got it restrung i need to just double check my uh the ways the way around that little uh, tuning spindle is is the tricky bit you need to get it right Tintin, yeah. <laughs> uh, no worries, Aston. Thank you very much. Glad you enjoyed it, Theo. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sean. Say so next week they'll be a bit later, I expect, Sean. Apart from Monday and Thursday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday will be it'd be later streams. So you better catch up. We well, better see it live. What's that, Chris? Been out buying the tree today, Chris. Whoa! Our tree went out weeks ago. <laughs> Mrs. Cruncher has been on it. Nothing tomorrow. Yes, there'll be a there's a video every day, video monkey. Every single day, including Christmas Eve. So nothing Christmas Day, but I'm sure you'll all have better things to do than watch me on Christmas Day. So cheers everybody, don't forget, thumbs up if you liked it, 
And um, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 3,000. And uh, I've got a nice radio to give away then. So, uh, and we have got the CB radio still to give away on Sunday. Cheers, everybody. Catch you again tomorrow. Be good. And all the rest of it. And uh, I don't know. We might do this one again tomorrow. Again, if you want to leave me any, uh, any uh, comments, if you want to see some more of that one, then uh, let me know in the comments. Bye, people.